Welcome to Office 2010 video number 49. Hey, in this video we want to do mail merge between an Excel file and a Word document. These are files that we downloaded uh, last video. Uh, so I want to first open up Excel and just take a look. I'm going to double click this and open it. And we have some student scores and totals and percentage grade and we want to print out a letter to each student. In our next video we'll see how to do it with an email. Now the raw data is stored here in Excel and we want to create six identical letters but we don't want to have to type in the names and the scores etc. So there's a way to connect raw data in Excel to a letter over in Word. Now, we've talked about earlier in this class, these are records, right? And we have field names at the top. So as long as your data is stored like that, it's easy. You create the letter one time over in Word, and then we will tell Mail Merge to create six different le letters with all of this raw data. Now, I'll just give you a warning. There's a problem when you send data from Excel over to Mail Merge, and we're going to see two ways to fix it. Before we do that, though, I want to actually copy this sheet over. Now, earlier we learned how to copy sheets. You can right click and point to Move or Copy. And once you see the uh, Move or Copy, you have to say where the sheet wants to go before which one. I'm going to click here. Click create a copy and then click OK. That'll do it. Another way to do it is to click on the sheet and click and drag. Now notice, first off, there's a little black arrow down below. And second, notice that the cursor has a piece of paper. Now watch what happens when, I'm, when I hold the control key. The piece of paper gets a plus symbol. That means you're copying it. Now with the black arrow to the right, do not let go of control, but let go of your mouse. And sure enough, it copies. That's the fast way to copy. All right. Um, the reason I did that is because I want to go over and create our mail merge, run into a problem, and then I'm going to show you two ways to fix it. One of them invol involves uh, uh, creating a second sheet like this. So I'm going to save this and close it. Control S and then close. Now I want to open up this letter to students. Actually, no, I want to close it. I want to copy it. Control C. This is in Windows Explorer, and then Control V. Now, with it copied, I'm going to click on it and hit the F2 key to rename in Windows Explorer. And I'm going to uh, say this is the mail merge. I'm going to do this. Whoops. I'm going to do this so that we retain our original letter we wrote. This one will contain the mail merge, which means that it will be connected to this file right here. Now, when you do mail merges like this, meaning the source data is in Excel or Access for that matter, that you should keep the files together because they're communicating with each other. So now I'm going to open up this letter. Here's the letter I want to send. Actually, I'm going to print it out. This first mail merge is print printed out. So notice it has a date and dear somebody. Well, I want six. Let me zoom in here. I want six individual letters, each with its own name and their uh, individual scores and their final grade. All right, now with our letter open, I'm going to go up to mailings. And under here, uh, by the way, we're not going to do envelopes or labels in here. We're going to do letters and emails, but don't. If uh, we'll learn the basics through letters and emails, and then when you click on an envelope, the key is you want to look at the options button and make sure down here that you select the the right type of size. I'm going to click Escape. Also with labels, it's the same thing. You want to make sure that you click the options. By default, it's something like 5160 Avery. But click under Options, and then you have to select the right one. The rest of what we do is similar. OK, so I'm going to go Start Mail Merge, and I'm going to use the Step-by-Step -step Wizard. You can use the ribbons also. Step-by-Step -step Wizard is over here. First one, we're going to say uh, Letters. This is Step 1 of 6. I'm going to click Next. Uh, this is 
uh, select the starting document, I definitely want to use the current document. I'm going to select, uh, click to go to step three. Step three, write your letter. Oh, wait a second, that's the next step. I would notice you can go backwards or forward, so you can move forward through this. Up at the top here, now we need to click on this and browse. We need to tell the mail merge where in the world to go to find the raw data, the records in essence. So I'm going to go to our class notes, mail merge, and we're going to start with this one. I'm going to double click it. My uh, screen is having a little problem here. Let me see if I, oh, there we go. So I'm going to pull this here. All right, so it's looking into the Excel workbook and finding the sheets. I'm going to connect it to the two. And if the two right now is exactly like the original sheet that we copied with the raw data. And that raw data, if there's kind of a, a known common problem that we encounter. And so um, we're going to do it, and then we'll go in and change the actual formulas to, to fix the problem inside of Excel. I'm going to click OK. That's the table I want. I do not want this max one here, so I'm going to uncheck it. These are just showing us the columns. You could actually sort if you want. Just uh, We've done that. Or you can filter. We're not going to do any of that. In essence, we're going to take the data set just as it is. Um, there's the workbook, um, but we don't. We just want all of the this uh, data here, these records. Notice we can already see a preview of the problem. There's all sorts of repeating decimals. I'm going to click OK. All we did there was tell Word where the records were, and we selected an Excel uh, workbook and a sheet. All right, I'm going to click down here, write your letter. I'm going to do this right here. Uh, with my cursor selected, I'm actually going to select more items. And I can select whichever one of these fields I want. I'm going to select that one and click Insert and then Cancel. That is a uh, field. We kind of, I think earlier in when we studied Word, we learned about fields. Anytime you click on something and it's gray, you know that something behind the scenes is working. That just means the mail merge will insert whatever record for each record the name from that Excel workbook. Now I want to come down here. I'm going to click more items. This one I'm going to select score two. Notice I double click, close. So now that one and then more items, score two. Whoops, I didn't click. I inserted twice. No problem. Mistakes are good. I'm going to click close. Just like our fields we saw earlier, dates and things like that, you can backspace. And when it's gray, when you backspace again, it's removed. Notice I pre typed this letter, assuming that I was going to insert these fields. So I have a little space there. You can see that, that dot. One more. Close. And finally, I want the final grade. That's a percentage grade. So I'm going to click here and percentage grade. All right, so we have a mixture of words that we typed in and um, uh, code here that's looking over to the fields in our Excel table. Now let's click Next, preview your letters, and there's the problem. Uh, and you can preview them here. Now before we go to <laughs> step six, complete your merge, which is just telling it to print, we're going to save this, control S. And I'm going to go over to Google because I remember many years, many years ago when I first did a mail merge, I, I ran into this problem and I was just like, man, what, what's going on? So I went to Google. So I'm going to click on a browser. I'm going to go to Google. And I'm going to type in mail merge. Uh, format, number, something like that. And there's a bunch of things here right at the top. Answer box, numbers don't merge right in Word. And if I read down here, number formatting problems in mail merge occur when cells that contain numbers. That sounds like what we're happen what's happening to us. I'm going to click here. 
this is from Microsoft. This problem's been around for uh, a while. Scrolling down here, and notice it even says muck around with field codes in Word, uh, which we actually did a little bit. You could see the keyboard shortcut Alt F9 there. We're actually going to have to look at the code behind the scene of the merged field. Anyway, we're pretending we're reading it, and then you get down here, and you're like, oh, that's it. There it is. That's how we fix it over in Word. We can format the field over in Word. Now, we will do this, um, and then I'll show you how to do it over in Excel also. All right, so we're going to have to simulate this. This backslash um, starts the formatting switch, and then you have uh, the definition of the switch, and then you have your custom number formatting code here. So I'm going to come back over to Word. And Alt F9. Now Alt F9, we saw this earlier with dates and table of contents and a number of other things we did also in Word. Um, and Alt F9 is just a toggle. So if I toggle, it goes code, uh, what we see when we print it out, code. So let's try and uh, cha change this right here. I'm going to click here. space and then uh, backslash pound sign space and then pound sign comma pound 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 and then decimal zero zero the decimal zero zero is what will give us our um, rounded to the two decimals we actually probably don't need to do any of that although if you were just copying and pasting remember all we did here was get rid of that dollar sign we can go ahead and look at this. Let's all, um, Alt F9, and then I'm going to go back one, and you can see on I'll go forward one. Look at that. So there it is. It worked. I'm going to Alt F9. Remember, it's a toggle. Let's try it. Let's be a little risky here. I'm going to put 0, 0.00. That actually is a custom number format that you see in Excel. 0, 0.00 it just means with formatting, show two decimals. I'm going to Alt F9, go backwards and forward so it looks like it's working. Alt F9. So I'm going to copy this. Again, you could just copy it straight from what you see in, in the help in the Microsoft site we got searching on Google, and remove that dollar sign. I'm going to copy, and then right here, Control V, Control V. I'm going to get rid of that space there and there. Now, let's take a look at this, Alt F9, and we can see uh, backwards and forwards just to make sure. It looks like it's working just fine. Now, this is a different matter. This is uh, fairly straightforward. We're just uh, formatting some integers and two decimals. But here, we're going to have to get tricky. And again, the way you deal with this is this is supposed to be a percentage, so you'd go over to Google and type percentage number format problem mail merge into Google, and then you'd get a solution. And by the way, this is a you know a beginning office class. Usually you don't you learn things like uh, Alt F9 in a beginning class to to alter code like this. But you know this is real world problem solving. And we just go out to Google, and we may not really understand how this is working, but we can follow the steps of information we find at Google, and then alter this. Now I want to come down to this field here, and this is supposed to be a percentage. If I Alt F9 and go look here, uh, this is supposed to be a percentage. Notice there's a decimal. There is no integer like there was up here, so we have to do something totally different. Alt F9. Now what you do is you go over to Google and type percentage, number format, mail merge, problem, right? And this is what, and you'd find the result, and this, this is what it tells you. And this gets a little tricky here. Now you have to highlight the merged field, and you actually have to build a formula over here in code uh, view here. Highlighting that, you use the keyboard shortcut Control F9. That puts this field inside of another field. And then you build a formula, I'm going to say, equals whatever that is. Remember, this is pulling that number from over in Excel. And then you multiply it times 100. Now, this is kind of weird, right? But if you were doing percentages by hand, there's two steps. You multiply 100, and then you add a percentage symbol. 
All right, so we got that showing up as 100. And now we can do simply this kind of formatting with a percentage symbol on the end. And then I'm going to do a percent symbol. All right, so that's pretty strange again. Uh, all we're doing is we're going over to Google. We we got this task at work. You know, we're the go-to person because we uh, took Business 216. And we don't have any idea how to do this, but we know how to go Google search for it and then uh, do it. All right, Alt F9. And then backwards and forwards, just so we can get it to work. It looks like it's working just fine. All right, so that was a little fancy footwork. Now we can finish our mail merge. I'm going to control and roll the wheel on my mouse. You can see now the this one single word document is connected to an Excel workbook with fields, and it's pulling for every record. This is one record, right? Name, three scores, and a percentage for every. And here's recipient three, recipient four. For every one record, we get one letter. Now I'm going to come over here, complete the mail, com complete the merge, and now I'm going to click print. And when you click print, it'll ask you all. You click OK, and boom, there are your letters printed. Now I'm going to click cancel here. Now in our next video, we'll see how to do a mail merge from Excel, and we'll see how to fix the problem not in Word with field codes, but in Excel using the text function. All right, see you next video.